Welcome to Godspeed Magazine Live. In tonight's show, we are asking the question, what kind of filth is sneaking in to the homes and families we have all across America? And how can we block it in Jesus' name? Pornography is a drug which produces an addictive neurochemical trap. It is a pheromone. It changes the set point, the pleasure set point of the brain and creates a new normal. So where they may have started off with some very basic pornographic images, it has a tendency to escalate, going to massage parlors, going to escorts, seeking prostitutes, looking to hook up with anonymous individuals online. Progression from nudity to hardcore sexual acts bestiality, sadomasochism, child porn. What the brain is really searching for is something new. Pornography images are resulting in a massive shift in the way our children are developing their sexual template. The premature sexualization of our youth is, is at an all-time high, and it's only gonna continue to get higher based on the trends that we're seeing. You know, you become sexualized as a six, seven, eight-year-old kid. On the increase, rape is on the increase. In the UK, uh, the uh, government has identified uh, a substantial number of child-on-child -child victims who were harmed because of the pornography consumption of the perpetrator. God bless you, brothers and sisters. After seeing that powerful opener, I think we all would benefit from joining in prayer. So I ask that you would join me now. We ask that all we would do would bring glory to you, Lord. We ask that we would be fully known, that Jesus alone, that Christ would always be our cornerstone. God, help us to walk into your will, into your presence in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, tonight, you're gonna hear how God is moving to protect our homes and families. From this month's parents issue of Godspeed Magazine, Dan Armstrong from Covenant Eyes is joining us live to expose the hidden dangers attacking marriages and children's and homes across our country and around the world. He'll share how God has lifted up Covenant Eyes to protect your family. We'll be right back with God in Action after this quick commercial break. Did you know that 90% of boys and 70% of girls are exposed to pornography online? Meanwhile, 71% of kids say that they're hiding internet activity from their parents. In 56% of divorce cases today, a major contributing factor is one spouse's continued use of inappropriate content online. What are you doing? to protect your family online. Covenant Eyes Internet Accountability monitors how the internet is used on your family's mobile devices and their computers. Each web page visited is rated similar to TV shows or video games, like T for teen or M for mature. This information is collected in easy to read reports, and as a parent, you can receive weekly reports for your kids. Plus, you can invite your friends to receive reports for your internet activity which enables you to enjoy the benefits of accountability and protection online as well. These reports provide you with a comprehensive view of how the internet is used in your home. They include information like the videos that are watched and words typed into search engines. Are you looking for additional protection? Covenant Eyes also provides internet filtering, which blocks inappropriate content and limits the amount of time spent online. Install Covenant Eyes on all your devices, your computers, phones, and tablets. There's no extra charge, and we provide free customer support. It's that simple. Sign up today. It's your turn to protect yourself and your family online. Blessings and welcome back. With us now is Dan Armstrong, the Corporate Communication Specialist and author from Covenant Eyes. Dan, welcome and thank you for being here with us, man. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. I. Uh, before we dive into the multitude of ways that Covenant Eyes keeps porn and filth and everything out of Christian homes, 
Can you tell us how did God bring Covenant Eyes into existence in the first place? Was it a business thing or was it like God's fingerprints were visible when the marketplace ministry was formed? I love to tell this story. And it's interesting because Juan de Haas, who is the founder of Covenant Eyes, is um, uh, he's not an IT person at all. He's not a software person. Uh, he's a geologist. <laughs> he loves rocks. <laughs> He was one of those lifelong students. He just wanted to be studying rocks all the time. So a lot of it in the petroleum industry. So he met his wife on an oil rig because he was a geologist and he was a petroleum engineer, real romantic first day. Um, so that's the beginnings of Covenant Eyes. They met on this oil rig. Uh, they ended up getting married and they have two children. So this is back in 1992. So it's Ron and his wife, seven-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy. And uh, just one day, uh, Ron's working, and his wife and the two kids are traveling on the west side of Michigan near the Marshall area. And as they're traveling, there was an accident that happened in front of them. So they stopped because the, the road was blocked. And after they had stopped, a tanker truck pulled with um, kerosene in it, uh, slammed into them at full speed. What was it that um, was in the truck? It was a kerosene truck. Oh, boy. So either the person fell asleep at the wheel or just didn't see Ron's wife and his two kids. Um, it blew the car up, killed them both, killed them all instantly, all three of them. Oh um, my they gosh. They identified them with the uh, dental records because there was nothing left. So imagine having that kind of Job experience. It really was a Job experience. I think his whole family wow, uh, passed away just one afternoon. So um, the police uh, had asked people who knew him, they said, well, when we have to tell him what happened, is there a pastor, is there a faith leader, someone that can break the news better to him? And he really has a pastor, he's, he's a believer. So um, the pastor went to his house and told him what happened. And Ron tells the story as, you know, just like Joe, you know, I fell down. I got that part right. He says, and Joe it also says that he fell down and worshiped. And Ron said, now looking back so many years, 27 years now, he can look back and say, you know what? When I fell on the ground, and he was down for probably 45 minutes to an hour. He said, you know what? I was never closer to God than I was at that point. Wow. Because he had my full attention. I had no family here. Every person that appeared about on earth the most was taken away from me in that instant. So at that point, um, he uh, fast forward a little bit and he ended up getting a settlement from that accident. Of course, it won't bring his family back, but it was roughly two to three million dollars from that accident. And he figured at that point in his life, I'm gonna take at least a year off, maybe more, and maybe I'm either semi-retired or fully retired. I'm not sure how to profit. So he's gonna do different now. Uh, God had different plans, of course, as he always does. So he was married in less than a year. And uh, the lady that he married two teenage sons. So when uh, in the church, accountability was a big uh, thing for him. So um, he, uh, he thought, you know what, this internet thing is really taking off. So how can I keep these now teenage boys that I have accountable without being over their shoulder 24 seven, which I don't want to do. Plus when they grow up, I'm not going to be there. And I don't want to forbid them from ever using this because it's a, it's a wonderful tool that can be used for good. So how am I going to do that? He says, you know what, if there's a way to keep them accountable, if I can find out what they're looking at without physically being there, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. So he and another gentleman, uh, able to develop a program that is able to see what people are taking online. And then later you can look at the calls and find out what you're looking at. So can you give us a sense of how much porn and filth are impacting marriages and children in America right now? Because you're at the center of the information coming in. You guys study this stuff. Sure. When you think of uh, business, businesses have a business model and businesses have a target audience. Pornography is different. There is no target audience for consuming pornography. It's wow. everyone. The porn industry wants old, young, male, female, or all ethnicities, all locations, doesn't matter. They want every single the person on, on earth to, to watch pornography. 
And when it comes to this business model, there are the three A's. Uh, it's anonymous. Most of it is you see pornography and a lot of people hide it on their computers or their phones. So um, oftentimes there's that, that sense of anonymity where they don't feel like someone else is watching them do that. Uh, accountability fixes that, but being anonymous is, is one of those A's. Two is affordability. Uh, most of it is free. People can experience for no cost. It used to be you had to have some money, you had to uh, go in a back alley to buy a magazine. Nowadays, um, you know, it, it's free, plus it's accessible. That's the third A. Uh, my refrigerator and my thermostat are on Wi-Fi. You know, what is not on Wi-Fi? And anything that's Wi-Fi enabled oftentimes can get to the internet. So um, it's everywhere. We have a pornified, hyper-sexualized culture, and the church is not exempt from that influence. We know that uh, three out of five Christian men admit to struggling with pornography at least once a month. We know one in seven Horrible. Christian women have said that they struggle with porn at least once a month as well. So when you look around your congregation and you shake five guys' hands, the likelihood of three of them struggling is, is quite high, maybe even more. Um, because it's not if a young person sees pornography, it's when. Um, it's just, just, you can't get away from it. Oh, it's so brutal. And what, what, how effective are the Covenant Eyes services at protecting families, at sort of stopping this influx of just sewage? Sure, and I, I love to talk about uh, the difference between accountability and simply filtering. Now, I think filtering is, is a good step, especially for young people. I think it's good to be able to uh, lock down certain things uh, for young people as you're training them. But there's a big difference between accountability and simply filtering. So imagine filtering is kind of like a fence. So what are fences good for? Fences are good for keeping young children and small animals inside confined spaces. As those <laughs> children get bigger, they start climbing the fence, they start digging under the fence, they find weak points in the fence they can get through, they find a gate open or they know how to do it. Um, so what we train with a fence is, as long as mom and dad are looking in the fenced in area and the kids are in there, they think everything's fine. Right. So if the parent turns their back and the kid gets out of the fence, and as long as the kid is back in the fence, by the time they turn their back, no harm, no foul. The thing with accountability is you're able to see everything that that child is doing. Pushing on which fence post, climbing, digging, what time of day. So you're actually involved in that person's life and holding them accountable, which is very biblical. And that's why yes. accountability works. So with Covenant Eyes, we've found out that the majority of people who come to us, we've done surveys, and roughly 80% or more have come to us and said that the main emotion that they're feeling is hopelessness. Mm -hmm. They've tried everything else. They want to stop doing this, but they feel like they can't. They feel like it's insurmountable. After a few months, two to three months, most people will say, roughly 86% will say, now I feel hopeful. And the reason why it's such a quick turn is because a lot of people have never experienced what good biblical accountability is. And I think oftentimes uh, we just go through life thinking, I'm okay, you're okay, let's not ruffle any feathers. To have an honest conversation with someone is really tough, yeah. but very few people have experienced uh, being able to be vulnerable and open and honest. And once they are, they, they never want to go back. They want to have that authenticity. They don't want to have that surface level stuff anymore. Right, absolutely. It seems to me that, you know, the nature of true courage is in vulnerability. So, you know, that's the scariest thing in the world to open up. And so to get to that place where you have vulnerability uh, and courage being in your life, it sort of opens a doorway for the power of faith to really become you know, that kind of stuff you dream of as a guy, you know, the giant sword comes through and you start crushing the boundaries. So when we're talking about filtering faith out of homes, what's the easiest way for our viewers to share Covenant Eyes with friends and family that they can just easily, uh, you know, adapt to it? Sure, or use best it. way to either go whatever device you use, whether it's a tablet or a phone or a computer, go to covenanteyes.com. And for those who are watching on Godspeed Magazine, if you type in the promo code Godspeed, then you will get your first 30 days of Covenant Eyes for free. So it will cost you nothing for your first 30 days of Covenant Eyes. Try it out, see what you think, give us some feedback, and it's as easy as that. Go to CovenantEyes.com, click on sign up, and then you sign up using that promo code Godspeed, and you'll get your first 30 days free. That's awesome. And if they, for any reason, aren't happy in the first 30 days, can they cancel or how does it work? 
Sure. Uh, within the first 30 days, uh, they can cancel and uh, they would owe nothing for that. Um, That's awesome. But most people, when they do sign up, they do experience uh, a, just that protection, that peace of mind that uh, their family is protected and that um, there are more people now involved in their lives. And uh, oftentimes that's, that's where they want to stay. I have, uh, since we started this conversation, I mean, we started with <clears throat> the Parents Magazine issue that we're doing right now and Covenant and I went into it. And then team members in our team internally started talking about uh, how much Covenant and I had helped them with the kids, you know, like all the kids came to this area. In our case, I didn't, maybe there were pornography stories. I didn't get to hear them if there were. Um, but but there were, it was primarily just multiple dads saying, you know, th it was, I had no idea, you know, my son got to an age, I didn't think he was old enough to be getting into stuff. And then I found his friend's text and then I found this and I found this and there was all these things. But so I, from our point of view, personally, I wanna thank you guys because you're really the first company to sponsor Godspeed Magazine Live with this, with the promo code and all that. And I, I appreciate that you guys sort of look for a way to stand with us in bringing God back into the media uh, and I also just really want to thank you personally for being here on the show and making this all palatable for us. Well, it's all a pleasure and uh, I'd love to do it again. Uh, anytime you guys want to do it, I have a wonderful story of a tale of two dads that I'd love to share with you when we have time. Awesome. I, you know, I love, that's awesome. I always get these cues for the, for the next time. <laughs> um, all right. When we return, we're going to be talking about the realities of what's getting into our homes and how we can build a hedge of protection around them. So stay tuned. You turn on the news and it's all political warfare. It seems like the media is always raging about problems with everyone, everywhere, about everything. I love Godspeed Magazine because it's about hope. It's about God being our hope. Hope in DC. Hope for persecuted Christians. Hope for the impoverished nations. Hope for the unborn child. And hope for the least, the last, and the lost. Because they focus on God in action. And that's what I love. God bless you, brothers and sisters, and welcome back. Here are some ways you can help families, including your own, keep the enemy out. This is our parents' issue, and here's a few action steps. Number one, remember the life of Job and pray for God to create a hedge of living protection over your house and your family. A wall is a wall. A hedge is alive. God's power is alive. Boldly pray and declare that because Jesus is your refuge and your dwelling, that it will be as it's written in Psalm 91, which says, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And believe me, don't stop with this piece of Psalm 91. Read the whole thing. It will light you on fire. So that's number one. Number two, the second thing we're going towards, share covenant eyes and accountability. Let the people know who are being attacked around you. Speak to them. Ask them if they're willing to let you work with them and be an accountability partner. Consider the, the scripture here in James 5.16, Confess, we added your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. That effectual, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We consider these things. Accountability has always been the power of the church internally. We don't want to substitute filters for accountability. Filters are great, but they're not accountability. Accountability is powerful. It's holding ourselves accountable within the body. Iron sharpens iron. So on the next point, go to covenanteyes.com, sign up for the 30-day risk-free trial. Remember to use the promo in the very last of the payment steps. It'll ask you to put in a promotional code, put in Godspeed. The beauty of this is the code blesses your family and the code blesses Godspeed Magazine as well to continue to bring you God in action, in the media to insert the glory of God into the media. And we're very grateful that all of you are standing with us. We are so encouraged by your comments all week on Facebook and everywhere else. Uh, so many of you emails, your responses. We just, we do this together. We're a body, we work together. We are indivisible with liberty and justice for all, really in Christ. 
above and in all things. So again, I wanna say, God bless you. And if you bring the gospel of Jesus Christ, I wanna to say to you, Godspeed.